Let's, let's everybody say, I just take authority over the spirit of slumber. And I break the power of the enemy. And I thank you, Lord. I crucify my flesh that I would hear and see what the Lord would say to me, what the Lord would show me. I ask you, Lord, to come teach me. Anoint my ears to hear and grant me understanding in Jesus' name. Now, Father, I thank you that every work of darkness, anything spoken by anyone, anything worked by anyone, any ritual by anyone, any assignment of the enemy is canceled, destroyed, made null and void. I thank you, Father. You send your thunder fire from heaven to destroy every work of darkness. We break every yoke of control. We cut every ley line. We cut every silver cord in the name of Yeshua and ask you for those that would travel, that they would float to you, Lord, for judgment and do what you will with them. But Father, we pray for those that would come against us. You said to pray, bless our enemies. So we ask you to bless them with salvation that they would just serve you all the rest of their days. And Father, we love you and we bless you and we thank you for the anointing for Laquita, that her tongue would be as the pen of a ready writer as she comes and ministers to us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Good afternoon, everyone. And good afternoon to everyone on Zoom. We're glad you're on and... Um, I just praise the Lord for the things that he's done in my life since I started coming to Lake Hamilton, which has been a blessing. And uh, we pray for this place a lot. We pray for the leadership and we pray for the anointing to come and that captives would be set free. And um, today I'm going to talk about a subject that um, really ministered a lot to me. Once I started hearing about this spirit, I realized I'd had this a lot in my life. It really, it goes along with walking out your deliverance. It's a really about the thought life, but the spirit I'm going to talk about today is a spirit of accusation. And I knew that there was a battle in the mind, but I didn't really know the name of that spirit was a spirit of accusation. But if you pay attention to what's being said in your thoughts, you're going to know you're being accused or you're accusing some, someone's being accused. And when it comes in an accusation, it's not coming from a good source. Romans 2, 1 says, Therefore you have no excuse, O man, every one of you who judges, for in passing judgment on another you condemn yourself, because you, the judge, practice the very same thing. That's a big one right there. It speaks volumes to say that if we judge, that we're, we're condemning our own selves. We're not the judge. I heard someone say once, when you start judging yourself or other people, you knock the judge, which is Jesus, off of the throne, and you go sit in his throne. That's not good. That's that's pride. That's exalting yourself above the one who is the only judge. Accusation is a cruel and judgmental spirit. It causes you to become judgmental and to criticize. Accusation and accusing spirits are the number one problem of mankind. Every single thing starts with accusation. Um, bitterness is spawned by accusation, those deep, bitter roots that get in your heart and they come and they start festering. It's because accusation has come upon you to accuse someone, even yourself and even God. We can accuse God sometimes for why haven't you done it this way? Again, you've gotten into pride and you're exalting yourself above his ways that are higher than our ways. So original sin kind of on this earth started with Adam and Eve, but it really started in heaven with Lucifer because he had a thought. He was at one time equal to Gabriel and Michael, the archangels. He was perfect until he had a thought. And he had a thought of exalting himself above God. He said the five I will statements, and then God said five I will statements back to him. But he was exalting himself. So the original sin happened in his own intellect, when he pursued the thought that he could be higher than God or be like God, he said, I will become like God. He was exalting himself. 
So his journey first started with accusation. Now he's reprobate with no chance of ever reversing what he did when he exalted himself above God. And Adam and Eve, they had spirits of accusation. As soon as their sin was uh, exposed, they started accusing others. Adam accused Eve, Eve the serpent. Nobody took responsibility. One thing we must do is take responsibility for our sins. This is big to God. If we take responsibility for our sin, we can get it under the blood. But if you cover it up and accuse someone else of your own sin, then it becomes hidden sin leading into bitterness and many other spirits we're going to talk about too. So the first thing we have to be um, thinking about when a thought comes is where did that thought come from? Where is it? Was it positive? Is it, is it with the word? Is it against the word? Is it something you told yourself? Is it what the enemy told you? Is it a God thought? If it lines up with the word of God, it is a, a, a God thought. But if it's not, it, you need to find out the source of it. So where, uh, when a thought comes, ask yourself, where did that come from? And when Adam and Eve were in the garden and they hid from God, and God came out and said, Adam, where are you? And he's like, we're hiding over here because we're naked. God said to him, who told you that? So when you get a thought, you need to say, wait, who told me that? Who told me that? If it is against what God says about you, it is from the enemy because he wants you to accuse yourself. So uh, 2 Corinthians, this is a theme verse for this, and it's 2 Corinthians 10, 5 through 6. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. We quote that a lot. And I love the next verse. It says, and having in readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So we conquer disobedience when we take those thoughts captive. And I love that. The, the word states that no flesh will be justified. We are justified by the blood of Jesus. We can't operate in the flesh because we'll have no justification there. But it is our carnal nature that wants to operate in the flesh. So that's why we have to fight it and we have to fight it in the thought life. This right here will help you walk your deliverance out. It's very important when you leave here from what you got delivered from to take your thoughts captive and analyze what's coming in. So you do not have to think and respond out of emotions. Emotions and feelings are the projection of your thoughts. The war is between your ears right here. It's in the mind. And a lot of times emotions come with demons. They manifest. What, what demon is manifesting, it has an emotion behind it. Don't follow your emotions and, and keep that in check. So we're, we're tempted even with our emotions. Think about anger, how hard that is sometimes when you're so angry, how hard it is to pull that, rein that back in because you're so hurt. But, you know, Philippians 1.28 in the Amplified says that if you remain stable and fixed, that's not in my notes, it just came to me, thank you, Lord. If you remain stable and fixed in your adversity, it is a sure sign to the enemy that you are saved and of his demise. It shows him if you stay, no matter what your circumstances are, at an even temperament and, and will operate in the fruit of the spirit, the enemy knows you're saved and he's not. And that's battlefield right there. So when you're tempted by your emotions, it could be thoughts, feelings, images, images of your past, haunting you about what somebody did to you to keep you down that road of keeping in that thought life of bitterness and keeping you snared. So the enemy has at that point gained a right to, to speak to you and he's speaking to us spirit to spirit. He's speaking through his the demonic spirits into our thought life. Adam and Eve broke the one and only rule God gave them by eating from the tree in knowledge of good and, and evil. Proverbs 23, 7 says, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith to thee, but his heart is not with thee. The battleground, again, is in your mind. Cast out those thoughts that the enemy is trying to plant, because he will try to do that all day long. They cannot take root and spring up to bear evil fruit in your life. Evil thoughts produce 
evil fruit, period. Positive thoughts will produce good thoughts. That's why Philippians 4, 8 tells us what to think about. It says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, and whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. So in case you don't know what to think about, you go to Philippians 4, 8. And the, the verse before that says that, uh, you know, the peace that passes all understanding will keep your hearts and minds. So keeping your heart and mind fixed on Jesus is very important. And then the very next verse tells you how to do it, what you're thinking on in your thought life. Take your life back by taking your thought life. A lot of people are so tormented in the mind. Sometimes you can see the torment just churning. And have you ever been around somebody and they're just, you can see it on their face. You can see it around them. They're just turmoil and torment in their minds. And we need to torment the enemy back. Take back the territory. When Worley, I just love this. He, tor he always tormented the tormentors. He said, you know, I bind you up or you can't be till you're so tightly bound. You cannot move except to exit when your time is up. And he would call for the angels to torment the tormentors. And I started doing that. And that works. It really does work. If he, they start tormenting the tormentors, especially even if you're in the middle of deliverance, those demons start coming out. They don't want to stay. It makes them want to, you know, get out of there. So, so literally what we have been um, bound by in hopefully all the past and going forward no more is stinking thinking. We call it stinking thinking, and they have um, thoughts that are against yourself, others, and like I said, even God. And then um, all of these thoughts that we are criticizing ourselves with, these are not from God. If you know what God feels about you through the word, you're not going to have thoughts about yourself like this, and you're certainly not going to entertain them when you recognize what's coming against you. So if your thought doesn't match the word, it's not of God. And any thought that comes to you that would propel you on how you should think, speak, and act in a way that would subtract, decrease, or devalue yourself or another person, this is absolutely from the kingdom of darkness. God gives increase in peace and in holiness. All of these, this stinking thinking and criticizing yourself and other people can lead to an unloving spirit, which is an antichrist spirit, and it can cause self-hatred. And all of these things can cause autoimmune diseases. Self-hatred, we know in the medical field um, that autoimmune diseases, cut your body builds up antibodies against itself, starts attacking itself. And hatred in the Bible means murder. And so self-hatred, your body starts attacking to kill itself. And that's where autoimmune diseases come from. And I'm a nurse. When I started for 41, almost 42 years, when I started studying the spiritual roots of diseases, it made so much sense to me after being in the medical field for so long, the spiritual roots, they, they make sense. It's, it's in the Bible even, but we don't pick up on it. It's kind of right there, but we're like just reading along and I never really put, you know, that together. If you look in the mirror and you criticize yourself, you are criticizing God's creation. If you look at other people and you think you're better than they are and you start criticizing them or their status or anything about them, you are criticizing God's creation. What you think and meditate on is what you will become. And then you have to get this under control to, to put a stop to it and to keep it from going forward any farther. If you have been in that, I realized once I started studying the spirit, I've been in this a lot in my life, a whole lot of this accusation, mostly against myself. I didn't realize how much self-hatred I had till I got delivered of self-hatred. And I, and I didn't realize there was so much that came with that. That was just feels awful. Get free because the freedom of it feels good. And now the enemy will try to come back against you. And I'm just going to confess right now. I was telling these two up front. <laughs> Before I came over here, I started manifesting anxiety 
and stress. And oh my goodness, I changed clothes like five times. And then I, cha I changed them and had her tell me what to wear. I ended up putting on the same thing I had on this morning. So, you know, I was just, I, and then I realized, oh my goodness, I'm being attacked with the very thing that I'm getting ready to speak about. And I didn't catch it because I was being distracted by what should I wear? Who cares? Wear something, you know, <laughs> just wear something. But I was being distracted by all that. And then I told her, I'm like, oh my goodness, I mean, you know, I was, I, I, I waited too long. We're going to talk about a 20 second rule. And I was way over the 20 seconds. So what I had to do is take authority over that. I repented for any anxiety, worry, stress, any, any insecurity, inadequacy, all those things that comes against us. I repented for all of it, told it to book it and go and to get out. And then I, I, I just said, Lord, I trust you. I lean not to my own understanding and all my ways I acknowledge you. And I dress myself in peace and faith right now. And I'm the, I, the, the peace of God came over me and, and my heart and mind was in, when it was winning right standing. But I confess that right now, that that's what happened to me. And that means that as you confess things, y'all have been done an amazing job of, of confessing. You confess your sins and you get healed of it. And so I applaud you for the confessions that, that you have shared, because that defeats the enemy. If you hide something, he's going to send it in. But when you expose it, deliverance will come. So in Galatians 5, we find the fruits of the spirit, which is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. And against, against such, there is no law. And they are, they are in Christ that have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit and let us not be desirous of vainglory, provoking one another and envying one another. The spirit of accusation is also a very subtle spirit of passivity. Passivity causes you to unplug, to plug into anything else that occupies your mind and helps you not think. See, it's taken your thought life to get you in the TV and, you know, on social media or whatever it may be to get you to, to totally check out. And that way you're not really on the alert and the passivity is a very dangerous place to be, but begin to take inventory of your thoughts. And this takes, I want you to know this takes a time. Sometimes we have to reprogram our mind. The more that I have done this, the easier it has been and the quicker I have been. Normally I would chew on these kinds of thoughts, the negative thoughts for way too long, way too long. So keep an inventory and then you get transparent before God, get naked, just get naked before God and, and expose everything. Ask him to expose all the evil works of darkness. I asked the Lord this past summer to pressure wash my heart out with the blood of Jesus. Pressure wash it out. And ooh, we things started happening. And I was manifesting things. I, I mean, I called Randy and Callie. I, I need deliverance. I, when can I come? And they were awesome. They let me come right away. Because I, I mean, some things had, had manifested, but I asked for it. That's some of the refining that we go through is we want it exposed so we can get rid of it. Stuff that's hidden, we want to take authority over and get it gone. So when you have a healthy thought life and you're doing things right in your thoughts, taking them captive, this will separate the mature from the immature. You become more mature in the Lord when your thoughts are in line with the word of God and you're not listening to the liar. He's a liar. If he tells you you're this or you're not this and it's against the word of God, he's lying to you and you call him a liar, call him out and you tell him to go in Jesus name. It also separates the overcomers from the ones who will never overcome. And we're called to be overcomers. If you read the seven letters in Revelation, it's all there's those seven letters to the church all have overcomer statements and what the rewards are. So they, the thoughts either come from yourself, they can come from other people. You know, you can have, you know, people who are operating in witchcraft put wrong thoughts on you too. They can come from, the, your thoughts can come from God. Those are the good ones and the enemy are bad. Now your thoughts can be programmed by the enemy over time to where your thoughts are not so kind towards yourself. So I would say, start being more kind to yourself. And know that you are valuable in the kingdom of God. You are valuable. You are worthy. 
You are the apple of his eye. You're chosen. You're part of his bride. And the enemy doesn't want you to know that. The enemy wants your identity. And one way he will get your identity is through an accusation spirit. Accusation, like I said, leads to that unloving spirit, but it causes a lot of guilt, shame, and condemnation. You're beating yourself up or you're letting other people criticize you or the devil criticize you, and it gets you into that deep shame and condemnation. You need to switch on your brain and get out of overdrive. A lot of us are just going all the time in the brain. Our, our brain needs rest, not the kind where, you know, the new age empty out your mind thing but it's entering the rest of God. And that means when you come into the secret place, you shut everything off. You close the door of your mind and the distractions so that you can sit at the feet of Jesus. And then uh, you could start, um, get, you get out of that overdrive and you start to get a hunger, more of a hunger for knowing God's character. And then you start to learn who he is because he wants that relationship with you too. And, um, the godly traits that we read about the fruits of the spirit, that is the character of God, are the fruits of the spirit. And I'm going to talk even more about that tomorrow. But here's the thing to keep in mind, just because you have a thought, it doesn't mean that you have to go with it. Just because you have that thought doesn't mean it's true. It doesn't mean something you should follow. You know, we, we should follow the word. And if that's not lining up, that's why the path is straight and narrow. There's not much room on that narrow path to take the junk of the enemy with you. And that includes the thoughts. You leave, there's no room to take flesh or the enemy's baggage with you on that narrow road. Revelation 12, 10 says, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. He's the accuser of the brethren. If you're around somebody who starts accusing someone and you come in agreement or you start accusing them on your own, you're in agreement with the accuser. And we only want to agree with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, not the enemy. Condemnation. If you're under condemnation, it is always from the devil. Conviction comes from the Holy Spirit. And when you feel condemned and shameful, unclean, you know, like you don't fit in or you're not doing everything right. You're striving, but you're just not accomplishing what you want to. It's the devil that just gave you that thought because we're more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. We don't have to strive to do it on our own. He says he will complete the work he began in us. He says he's the author and the finisher of our faith. Give him the pen and say, write the rest of my book. Actually, he really already wrote a book of destiny about every single person before the foundation of the earth. All you have to do is say, let my destiny be fulfilled that you wrote about me already. Um, sometimes you um, might hear a voice in your head that just constantly is nagging and you're never going to get this. You're never going to get ahead. You're a failure. You don't measure up to other people. Uh, you're not like them. Well, you're not supposed to be like them. You're supposed to be like Jesus. That's condemnation, and it's from the devil. When God convicts us, it's because he loves us. He says he chastens those that he loves. If you're, not, if you're getting conviction from the Holy Spirit, you say, thank you, Lord, for showing me that, and thank you for loving me enough to tell me, and, and you thank him. He leads us into all truth. The enemy won't lead you into truth. He's going to lead you into a lie, so don't follow the lies. He is our comforter, our guide, and he raises us up. Ephesians 2, 6 says, and raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. The word says that we look through a glass darkly. 1 Corinthians 13, 12, for now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face, now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. We must look at the light with the light turned on in order to have a happier, saner life between the ears. We've got to have the light on. But there's condi conditions. This freedom comes with responsibility. It takes an action on your part, and that's to take that thought captive. James 4, 7 says, Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. A lot of people will say, Resist the devil, and he will flee, but they leave out the part about submit to God. And I guarantee you, if you submit to God first, resisting the devil is going to be easier. 
submitting to the truth of his word. Get in that word so you know what the truth is. It takes effort to resist the devil, and God requires us to participate with the thoughts being taken captive. Why does he do that? Because he wants us leaning on him and the gift of the Holy Spirit. He wants us to have that discernment to come to him so that we can conquer the enemy in the thought life. Second Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his, concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That's a good prayer to pray for the lost. You, Lord, it's your will that none should come to, uh, that all would come to repentance and none should perish. So I bring this person I'm praying for before you. I'm praying the will of God for their life that they would never perish. And on Randy and Callie's side, they will have one of the best prayers for the lost I have ever read. If you have somebody, you know, ask us about that website because it's got a great prayer for that. A lot of times through our thought life, we could get into dead works. And dead works is sin. It really is. It's it's really trying to do things in your own power. The ones who are in dead works are the ones who stood before the Lord and said, but I did this for you and I cast out de devils for you and I did that. But those, they're trying to get there on their own works and their own merits. And dead works is sin. It is God's nature to forgive us. Anytime we ask for forgiveness, he's faithful and just to forgive us and he cleanses us from all unrighteousness. And as his children, we need to pre or, or practice what our father teaches. We need to practice forgiveness, which is one of the hardest things that some people have. It's a big obstacle for some people to, there's some people who will look you in the face and say, I just can't forgive that. I can never forgive them for that. Well, you know what? If it, our forgiveness is contingent upon us forgiving other people. So we're, we're not imperfect. They aren't either. We need to separate them from their sin and realize you, you push them to the side and you go after the enemy because it's the enemy that we are fighting, not that person. They're bound. They're responding in a demonic way. And they need, they need Jesus just as much as anybody else. And God loves the offender just as much as he loves the offended. We have to keep that in mind. He died for them too. Hebrews 6, 1 says, therefore, leaving the principles of doctrine of Christ, let us go into perfection, not laying again, the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. So dead works have to be left behind. Repentance from dead works means to repent to God for participating with those things that are dead works. When we have accusation against others and ourselves, that is dead works. Accusation is a dead work because it's a sin and it's holding some charges against people, holding charges against yourself, holding charges against God. We don't have any business holding charges. We're supposed to release people. We're supposed to forgive trespasses as we are forgiven. Repentance from dead works is a, is a, a, the way to go. In all of this accusation spirit against others and ourselves uh, causes unforgiveness. It causes um, fear. It'll bring fear on you. And if you go to bed uh, angry, fear is going to come up on you. And fear has torment. Envy and jealousy are dead works because they produce the works of death. And it's kind of like, uh, sometimes the envy and jealousy can cause you to be in a, this overdrive of keeping up with the Joneses, having the next best this or the next best that. And I've learned that 80 to 90% of diseases have spiritual roots. You can't be healed of these diseases if the spiritual roots are in place. Medications, going to doctors, sometimes they can treat symptoms, but you want the root pulled out to where there's healing and you get rid of those diseases. So if you're in that category of something that is because of a, a, a spiritual root, what brings that, what releases you from that is repentance. And then it has no legal ground to stand on. And, and it, that's repenting for generational bloodlines too sometimes. And then that, that disease has to go. So sometimes when I'm doing deliverance, you might hear me say and take your diseases with you so that it doesn't set up in your body. Like envy and jealousy causes rottenness of the bones. You know, there's a, um, a hope deferred makes the heart sick. It's in there. It's in there. So we might call out a spirit of hope deferred and say, hopelessness, go. Hope deferred, go. Proverbs 23, 7, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. You know, that that is so true. 
you know, that if you, you know, when you look at the, the spies who went down and they came back and they said, we are as grasshoppers in our own sight. So we were to them. If you start seeing yourself with gra grasshopper spirit, which is inferiority and insecurity, then other people are going to see you that way too. And you have to fight that. No, you're not, you know, substandard. You're not beneath other people. We're supposed to stay low in humility and we're supposed to not think more highly of ourselves than we ought to, but we're also not supposed to think that we're nothing and, and put ourselves under the, the feet of the enemy because we're nothing and insecure and inferior. That's not the, that's not how that works, but that's how the enemy corrupts that. Holding thoughts captives requires that action and it's required by God because God wants you to do this in faith and obedience to his word. He tells us to take those thoughts captive. We don't have to be led around by those thoughts or emotions. Again, just because we think something doesn't mean that it's true. So Paul instructs us to bring those thoughts to the obedience of Christ. And when we are angry, unforgiving, judgmental, unloving, impatient, Anybody seeing themselves in that? Because I've seen where I've been there. Uh, they can't be in our thoughts because we're created in God's image. That is not the fruit of how God operates in situations. His is the fruit of the spirit. Psalm 103, 8 through 14 says, The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide. Neither will he keep his anger forever. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Like a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame. He remembers that we are dust. And then Proverbs 8, 18, 8 says, the words of a talebearer are wounds and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly there's that innermost parts of the belly a tail bearer are as wounds and they go down to the innermost parts of the belly stomach issues come from gossip and being a tail bearer and you're like wow you know it also comes from fear fear causes gut issues too but if you're having stomach issues and gut issues you need to stop and say oh have what have, have i been sinning with my tongue have I been slandering anyone, bearing tales? Have I in fear for some reason? And then you just, you, you evaluate. And then you get that, get rid of that. Luke 9, 54 50 and 55 says, And when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, wilt thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them, even as Elias did? But he turned and rebuked them and said, ye know not what manner or spirit you are of. Jesus recognized that they had, they had wrong thoughts. They were using what they knew from the kingdom, but they were, they wanted it in a wrong way. They knew what, king, he knew what kingdom it came from. It wasn't the kingdom of God. The Christian spirit is not one of retaliation. Has anybody ever felt like they wanted to get even with somebody? Yeah. Or, you know, we're not supposed to, uh, take pleasure in other people's calamities but we sure don't want to be the one that takes revenge against somebody to cause a calamity even the law of moses commanded not to avenge and hold grudges when we avenge ourselves we feel we have the right to judge or the right to be bitter i know i've been there before where i felt like i was justified in my thoughts and my feelings toward any given situations which is so easy for the flesh to fall into it's a trap the gospel commands the same thing but the law and the gospel allow the law to take its course when men have sinned so when we turn against others what spirit are we of we're not of the spirit of god when we enter a debate we're not of the spirit of god it says not to dispute. the bible says not to dispute doubtful things we're not supposed to dispute we're supposed to be walking in love if you need to tell somebody what's going on you follow the holy spirit and you say it in love. Characteristics of an accusing spirit. Accusing others, accusing themselves, and, and even accusing God. They cause people to be suspicious of other people. And I can honestly say at one point in my life, I became suspicious. Are they going to do this? Are they going to hurt me? Are You know, that's demonic armor around your heart, not trusting people. You become suspicious. Instead of having a spirit of discernment 
you walk in this spirit of suspicion. You don't trust people. It's a mistrusting spirit. If you've been hurt and somebody has hurt your trust in them, then you can you have to be really careful because you'll get a spirit of mistrust that, that doesn't want to trust anything coming from them. They believe the worst about someone. I know some people who literally are so negative that everything that comes out of their mouth is a negative comment about other people, very judgmental criticism. And you're just, and when you're around it for a long time, it just wears you down. It gets icky. You don't like it because in the spirit realm, when you're, when you're trying to work on these things out for yourself with the Holy spirit, and then you have somebody you're around that's negative all the time and they're tearing people down, walk away. You know, I've still sometimes try to find the right words to say without, you know, a rebuke of offense that would re cause somebody to feel rejected, but to say it in love, how, well, this is not edifying. This is not edifying. We need to lift people up. And so um, it, believing the worst about someone will lead you into sins of the tongue. It's in your heart. So you've already kind of gone there, but so it causes continual bitterness. Have you known anybody that's bitter? Constantly bitter. Everything is a bitter situation for them. Easily offended without a cause. Everything used to make me be offended. In my growing up years, I was so rejected all the time. I was always in bitterness. Shame can cause you to accuse yourself and others. So all of this accusation comes with shame. Receiving it, giving it to other people, making other people feel ashamed. And you want to do it till they feel as miserable as you do. That's what the accusation spirit wants to do. Self-pity causes you to accuse yourself. Self-pity is called the super glue to hell. It will cause you to stay stuck in your past. The easiest way to come out of self-pity is with thanksgiving. To thank God for everything you have is thankworthy. They are judgmental and critical of others. So it causes a, a spirit of criticism. Would you get my water for me? I'm getting a dry throat. <laughs> so what you don't want to do is compound sin with more sin genesis 3 35 or 3 through 5 says but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden god hath said thank you you shall not eat of it neither shall you touch it lest you die and the serpent said unto the woman you shall surely not die for god doth know that in the day ye eat thereof then your eyes shall be open and ye shall be as god knowing good and evil You shall not surely die. The first direct lie in scripture is this, that you would not die. But that's what God had told them. So the first temptation was against the word of God. And I guarantee you every day we go through temptation against the word of God that has to be taken captive. John 8, 44. Ye have of your father the devil and the lust of your fathers ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh on it of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. So that tells you that all lies originate with the enemy. Genesis 3, 12 and 13. And the man said, the woman whom thou gavest to me with me, she gave me of thee, of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, what is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me and I did eat. After Adam and Eve, <coughs> excuse me, a drink. After Adam and Eve sinned, their only excuse to the Lord was complete accusation. She accused Adam, Adam, and, uh, and, uh, or Adam can accused Eve and Eve, the serpent. Proverbs 28, 13, he that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsake them shall have mercy. I'd rather work it with the mercy. Have you ever cheated anyone or stolen something and then tried to cover it up by lying? Even kids that are young will do that. That means they, they've got that spirit already. You know, they don't have to be taught that. That spirit's just there. This is accusation that will cause you to suffer com consequences and find no mercy from God until repentance comes. 
This type of cheating and stealing can cause a vagabond spirit, which is a curse of Cain. It causes um, a wandering spirit and, and poverty. When we have thoughts of guilt and shame, we have accusation toward ourselves. When we want to keep things hidden about ourselves and we don't want others to know what we've done, we have a fear of being rejected. Fear of rejection is a big thing. It will cause you to do a lot of things that you normally would not do. It's led by a spirit of self-accusation and shame. Ac accusation is a nitpicky spirit. It's a fault finder. It's going to be a finger pointer and it's going to, it's, it's words that are spoken and it makes us, uh, so we feel better about ourselves. We start nitpicking, fault finding, criticizing and judging. And then we, and then after we do that, we still feel rejected. The rejection is still there. We do it out of rejection and shame and guilt. And without accusation, people would never have rejection in their own families. That's a big statement. If you didn't have accusation, a spirit of accus accusation, you would never have rejection. So it, everything starts with accusation. Everything starts in the thought life. So guilt, that guilt and shame causes you to go further into self accusation. And you, you almost get on after the enemy accuses you so much, you almost get on autopilot and you become the accuser of yourself. And then you're operating in the kingdom of self, which is the unloving spirit. And it is uh, an antichrist spirit. And that's a whole nother teaching. It's not your own vain imagination. It is a spirit that is trying to cause discord, strife to lead you to a lie. It's causing problems in all of our relationships, uh, marriages. There, if there's strife, there's every evil work. It has us accusing ourselves and everybody else. Anything else to make an excuse to not take responsibility. It can be as much as not being good enough, not being pretty enough, not being thin enough, not having the right clothes, not presenting yourself, trying to be something that you're not sometimes. 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Anytime that you get into a I woulda, shoulda, and coulda, that's a, a spirit of regret and living in the past, and it's accusation. You're you're now in accusation. You're already attacking yourself with self-accusation, -accus leading to self-hatred, and living in the past. And then uh, the 22nd rule I was talking about earlier Satan uses the spirit of accusation to open up the door to all other spirits, which is kind of interesting. It all starts with the accusation. As long as it is just a thought that lasts less than 20 seconds, it won't take a foothold and you don't go into the sin of, of accepting the thought. Science, and the reason I, I bring this up, science has now proven that when we chew on something in our minds that is not healthy or a healthy thought for 20 seconds or longer, our immune system and DNA begins to be compromised. 20 seconds. When I was doing all that I was doing earlier, I went way past the 20 second. I was like, oh, this has been going on too long. I better take care of this right now. So 20 seconds is where you need to cut that off. The moment we begin to really chew on the thought, we open up the door that separates us from God, separates us from others or even ourselves. So think about what you are thinking about. Romans 1, 21, because that when they knew God, they glorified him, not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations. Remember, that's what we're tearing down is the vain imaginations. And in their foolish heart was dark, darkened, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. So they thought they were wise, but they were not wise at all. Paul addresses the Jews in that passage, that same passage that are, without naming them, he's describing their well-known disposition to justify themselves and criticize others. There's a lot of that that goes on, you know, to feel better about yourself, you justify yourself through criticizing and condemning other people to justify you. That's not, that's not right thoughts. Um, the accusation has a lot of bad fruits. And I'm going to, I'm going to name off the fruits that come with accusation. There's a record of wrongs and that can be a record of wrongs you keep against yourself or other people, gossip, codependence in someone else's sin. You can take a second party offense. A second party offense is when somebody you care about or love 
has been hurt by someone, so you get offended for them. And I had this happen several months ago, and somebody I went to church with uh, was really getting worked up about something that happened to me from, from another source. And I remembered saying to her, you cannot take an offense on my part. You cannot take an offense because somebody hurt me. You know, we love them, we bless them, we forgive them, and we're just going to move on from here. But don't be offended on my behalf. Please don't be offended. I mean, I didn't, I appreciated that she loved me enough to be upset about it, but I didn't want her to get into an offense and unforgiveness. Misunderstandings is another uh, bad fruit of uh, accusation. A scrambler spirit. And a scrambler spirit is words that are twisted. Have you ever been in a conversation with somebody and then later they repeat back what you said? And you know, they, that's not what I even said. They're hearing something different because there's a scrambler spirit and it can, it, it comes in through unforgiveness. So then you might have some unforgiveness, whoever you're talking to, you might need to forgive them for something. And then if you wake up with a scrambler uh, spirit, a spirit of fear came upon you in your sleep. See, Job said a spirit of fear came on me while I slept. So if you wake up with that going on, you need to stop and say, oh, wait, I think we have a scrambler spirit. Usually, whoever the two that are talking that have twisting going on, they are usually one of them is in bitterness and needs to forgive. When all else fails, say stop and say, hey, I think we're operating in a scrambler spirit. Let's sit down and forgive each other and let's find out what's going on. And then you defeat the enemy because two put 10,000 to flight when you do that and you're doing the word. So the scrambler jumbled thought patterns. If you wake up with jumbled thought patterns, there's a scrambler spirit that's at work. Chaotic thoughts that are preceded by fear. A lot of times those chaotic thoughts come with fear. Accusing other people in their own sin and ignoring your own. Burden bearing. There's false burden bearing. Some people will carry the weight of the world on their shoulders, and that's not their job. That's the Lord's job is to carry the weight of the world. Slander, or also known as murder by tongue. Mind control. Record and replay. That's where you've had a stressful situation and you just keep recording it in your mind and replaying and replaying. And that's causing you to concentrate on that spirit. And you need to cut that off and say, no, I'm not going to follow that pattern. I'm going to take this to prayer. There's also a spirit called a rehearsal spirit. And that's when you get upset with somebody. How many of y'all have ever got upset with somebody and you sit around, you're waiting for the next time you get to meet with them? And you are saying in your mind what you're going to say, I'm going to say this and I'm going to say that. I used to be so bad at that and I still have to catch myself sometimes because it's an old pattern. But you think you, you're you going to tell them this and you're going to tell them that. That is a spirit of rehearsal. So you need to tell it to go. If you can't, this record and replay spirit, if you have a hard time going to sleep and you're not able to go to sleep, you need to say, oh, wait a minute. I bind and take authority over record and replay, and I command you to go now. You'll not take my sleep. And it really will help you to go on into sleep. Programming, guilt, shame, suspicion, lying, torment, judging others, isolation. An accusing spirit who's accusing themselves will isolate themselves because they don't want to deal with it. It's like an ostrich spirit. They'll put their head in the ground. Self-pity, unworthiness. Unworthiness is complete self-accusation and keeping records against yourself. Uh, it can be a spirit of racism, envy and jealousy, mistrust, rebellion, offense, and there are more, but those are the, the main ones. Make your choice. Are you going to serve God in your thought life or serve Satan? And you, you've got to stop allowing Satan to live, let you live your life on autopilot. See, we get so programmed to just churn on those thoughts that are not godly. So um, Hebrews 5, 12 through 14. For when the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God and are become such as have need of milk, but not of strong meat. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Discernment is a gift of the spirit. You want to ask God to give you discernment in your thought life. And then um, 
you will you will have a much better um chance of getting it quicker to have discernment. Oh, I'm discerning. I'm not thinking the right thing. But really a lot of it is paying attention and not being in that passivity. Passivity doesn't want you concentrate on what you're thinking about. First John 2, 9 through 11. He that saith he is in the light and hateth his brother is in darkness even until now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness and walketh in darkness and know or not, knows not where he goes because the darkness hath blinded his eyes. Romans 2, 1, you may think you can condemn such people, but you are just as bad. You have no excuse when you say they are wicked and should be punished. You are condemning yourself for who you judge, how you judge others. You do these very same things. And that's just the same scripture we started out with in a, a different version. In pride, accusation wants mainly for you to tear other people down to look down on people, to look down on yourself, but also when you're tearing other people, it's to make you look good. So it, those poor people who are criticizing everyone, they feel bad about themselves. They don't know their self-worth. They don't know who they are in Christ. They don't know how much they mean to God and they need prayer and they need help. First John 5 through 10, this is the message which you have heard from him and declare to you that God is in light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as in he is the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Lying comes from a spirit of fear and it also will um, cause deception and it'll cause you to deceive yourself and other people, of course, because you don't want to be exposed and it causes it to go on into rejection. Self-accusation is expressed as guilt and shame toward ourselves. And I, I said that before, but I repeated it again, because I want you to remember that anytime you go into guilt and shame, you're accusing yourself and you're in condemnation. And I can say that I really had this a lot in my life. I was always hearing the accuser criticize me and put me down and I'm not this and I'm not that and making me feel bad about everything. But what really upset me one day I was I saw my reflection in the mirror I was coming out of a room and I said um man or I heard man I hate myself and I stopped after two feet and I thought wait a minute that's not me that's another voice I don't hate myself but what I realized is that's the voice I've been hearing my whole life and it was my voice, it was disguised as my own voice. And I've been hearing the enemy use my own voice, making me think that it was my own thoughts. So don't get that confused that the thoughts you're having because it's with your voice might be truth or or anything coming from, that it's coming from you. Don't, don't think it's coming from you because it's a negative thought is coming from the enemy. <clears throat> Romans 8, 1, there is no condemnation to those which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Self-accusation has one looking for approval. You don't approve of yourself. You're not feeling approved and accepted by other people. So you're going to start accusing yourself so that you can get some sort of seeking out that approval and you're wanting it, but you're still accusing yourself. Accusation leads to a fabricated personality. This comes through perfectionism. Um, it is making yourself, making up somebody that you're not. It's a completely deceitful lying spirit to fabricate who you are, trying to be somebody that you're not. You have put these yokes on yourself of perfectionism and you can't, you can't meet it. It's not what God designed for you. And you're in this perfectionism or you're trying to be like somebody else. Then you become a fabricated personality and it's not who you are. And the, and the very important thing to know is that a fabricated personality is an autoimmune disease of the brain, and it will cause 
Alzheimer's, dementia, memory loss, forgetfulness. If you are in uh, putting something away, how many of y'all put stuff away and you're you're going to save it, you know, put it in a safe place? And my mom used to do this all the time. And then she wouldn't be able to find it. And I go, mom, find one safe place, one. And then you'll know where it is every time you go to look for it. Well, I judged her. So now sometimes that happens to me. But if you put stuff away for a safe place and then you forget for where it is, um, it's said that you are operating in a spirit of fear and accusation while you're putting it away and you're, that passivity takes your memory of where you put it. And so I was like, you know, anytime I'm going to put something away for, for a safe place now, I'm going to make sure that my mind is right so I can remember where I put it. Um, freedom in Christ is really not hard. The enemy wants you to think it is. We can't forget the simplicity of Jesus Christ. We're in a battle that's complicated, but there's the simplicity of Jesus Christ. And we have defeated the enemy through him in every area. Jesus did it on the cross. And he's, when he said it was finished, it's finished. We just have, we already have it. He's, he's given us dominion. He has given all of it to us already. All we have to do is receive it and walk in it. And it does take action. If I try to hand you a gift, but you won't take it, you know, you're not receiving. We need to receive everything that he died for us to have. God's mercy means that he will not condemn you when you fail. When you fail, he's going to show you. And that's when you immediately repent and get it under the blood of Jesus. And that's not talking about, you know, willful, purposeful. I'm going to go out and do this kind of sin. And then I'll repent later. That's greasy grace. You want to strive to live a holy life, sanctified uh, in piety and, and being a doer of his word. And then when you mess up, that's when you go to repentance. Repentance is, is everything. The devil will condemn you, though. He'll try to catch you quickly before you get that under the blood of Jesus. He'll try to catch you with condemnation and accusation. Oh, you failed again. Oh, you messed up. Well, you know what? You just tell him the blood of Jesus is still enough. Run to the father. As soon as you mess up, he doesn't want you. We tend to isolate even from God when we've not done something right. We don't feel right. That's condemnation. The conviction is to draw you to him. Um, it's a powerful, liberating truth. Unfortunately, that guilt and shame the enemy has, has uh, put on us so much causes us to hide it. We don't ever want to hide it. Micah 7, 18, who is a God like unto thee that pardoneth iniquity and passeth by the tra transgressions of the remnant of his heritage? He retaineth not his anger forever because he delighteth in mercy. God longs to comfort you and not condemn you. If you've ever listened to the Father's Love Letter on um, YouTube, he says, and it uh, is scriptures about everything that he feels about you. And it's saying, I'm not an angry God. I'm not holding, I'm not, I'm not up here holding it against you. Please come to me. I want, you know, he's saying, I want you to come to me. He longs for that relationship where you can bring it all to him. Um, a lot of times when we get in that condemnation, it brings so many other things like depression, discouragement. Um, and these are not from the Lord, not at all. God never deals with his children with that fruit. Only the enemy deals with God's children with that fruit. And to stay free from this and to conquer this battle in the mind, you have to quickly reject those feelings and, and cast them down. He simply wants you to yield to his Holy Spirit conviction and to his word and come out of agreement with the enemy. Psalms 94, 21 through 23, they gather themselves together against the soul of the righteous and condemn the innocent blood. But the Lord is my defense and my God is the rock of my refuge. And he shall bring upon them their iniquity and shall cut them off in their own wickedness. Yea, the Lord our God shall cut them off. The enemy tries to gain a toehold with the thoughts. And he is not, if he is not resisted, it will become a foothold. And that becomes, that brings in fear and torment. He brings in um, ongoing lies and he will keep feeding that thought as long as you dwell on it. He, as long as you'll hold it, he'll keep feeding it. The enemy does that, but God can do better. God will do better if you take it to him. Accusation is a false witness. And in the Bible, it talks about the seven things that God hates. The false witness is one of them in a lying tongue. That accuser is a false witness. 
And that's, those are found in uh, Proverbs 6, 16 through 19 about the things that God hates. Proverbs 12, 17 through 18, he that speaketh truth showeth forth righteousness, but a false witness deceit. And there, there is that speaketh like a piercings of sword, but the tongue is of the wise is health. God is your defender. He's defender to the accuser of the brethren. And you should never try to take that position and defend yourself. It's hard not to do sometimes when your feelings are very, very hurt. But remember, Jesus was um, also offended, very offended. And he never defended himself. He never opened his mouth once to defend his position or to, to justify that he was not uh, uh, guilty of what he was being accused of. He knew what he was here for. Um, let's see. Matthew 18, 15. When you have offense come at you, the Bible says that it's impossible that offense won't come. It's what we do the, with the offense that um, measures sin or walking in obedience. Matthew 18, 15. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass, trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. This is really something that the body of Christ needs to get down because we tend to, in our emotions, being led by the thoughts that are tormenting us, the emotions that are overtaking us, we go run to those that are closest to us that we know will be in agreement with us and oh, justify you have a right to feel that way, which we really don't. We're supposed to take it to the brother and come into forgiveness. And, when, and we, we murmur and complain and fault find to our closest friends so that we can get justified and our flesh feels better. So in summary, when your thoughts are critical and destructive concerning yourself, they are not coming from you. And there's been many scriptures today that reveal the fiery darts. Those that come in your mind are fiery darts from the enemy. The person God created you to be is capable of being at peace and full of joy, no matter what kind of trouble you are going through. God created you to be able to make a mistake. If it happens, you have someone who stands up for you, and that's Jesus. You say you're sorry, you receive forgiveness, and then you are at peace again with God because he says he forgives. The accuser comes to do something else. He gives you thoughts that would destroy your peace. And if you stay there, you're not going to have any peace. And then your ability to receive God's love is hindered. The accuser makes you feel guilty and awful even after you've apologized for the wrong. Now, if you've apologized for the wrong and you're still feeling guilty, you have not forgiven yourself. You have to make sure you forgive yourself. And then the enemy's out to still kill and destroy. So he is a destroyer and he does it a lot with the thought life. God says you're fearfully and wonderful made, wonderfully made. And he put a lot of thought into his creations. And so when the enemy accuses what God did, this is a lie. And it's, it's a lie we do not need to come into agreement with because then we're agreeing with Satan. So um, would y'all like to get rid of spirits of accusation? Okay. So I bind the strong man of accusation right now in Jesus' name. I bind all keeping records of wrongs. I bind everything and every demon that comes in with uh, accusation. I bind the uh, enemy that would lie, the lying spirits that cause them to believe lies. I break your power right now in Jesus' name. So I'm going to lead y'all in some um, repentance for these spirits, okay? Say, Lord, forgive me for having a spirit of assumption, for being judgmental, suspicious for being skeptical for not trusting for evading for deflecting forgive me for keeping records of wrongs against myself against other people and even against you god thank you for or help forgive me for not being able to apologize when I've been wrong, forgive me for pride and having a spirit of offense. Lord, forgive me for being pushy, for for being a, for having disappointment. Forgive me for making innuendos and not being forthright with what I'm trying to say. 
Forgive me for feeling obligated when my heart's not in it and I'm doing it for the wrong motives. Forgive me for having a scrambler spirit, for being discouraged, for causing division, for rebellion and defiance. Forgive me for having a spirit of replay and record. Forgive me for having a spirit of rehearsal. Forgive me for comparing myself with other people. Forgive me for being in competition with other people. Forgive me for having a spirit of cur curiosity. Sticking my nose where it doesn't belong. Being a busybody. Right? Being in other people's business. Forgive me for controlling and manipulating people and situations. Forgive me for gloating and burden bearing. Forgive me for misunderstandings, for agreeing with the destroyer, for shame. Forgive me for guilt, condemnation, a loser spirit. Forgive me for complaining, Lord, for getting overwhelmed, for being bored and thinking life is monotonous. Forgive me for feeling unworthy, for being tired, self-sabotage. Forgive me for helplessness, thinking I can't do anything. Forgive me for impatience. And intolerance, the woulda, coulda, shoulda. Forgive me for feeling trapped, operating in perfectionism. Forgive me for aggravation and agitation. Forgive me for drivenness, irritability, compulsiveness, analytical, churning every detail in my mind trying to figure it out, trying to figure out how to manipulate it, what I can do to fix it. Forgive me for being in self-pity and not having gratitude because there's so much to be grateful for. Forgive me for questioning you, God. Forgive me for racism. Forgive me for giving unsolicited advice. That causes rejection, by the way. Forgive me for being stubborn and stiff-necked. Forgive me for making excuses to justify myself. Forgive me for the blame game, for being obstinate. Forgive me for self-accusation and agreeing with the accuser. Forgive me for accusing God or others. Forgive me for fear, fear of myself, fear of other people, fear of rejection, and not being capable when I can do all things through Christ. Yes, okay, in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit, I command in the name of Jesus, all assumption to come up and out of your people right now in Jesus name, all assumption, assuming things that aren't true, come up and out of people right now in Jesus name. I bind and break the power of all suspicious spirits right now, having suspicion, not believing and trusting in anybody come up right now, all skepticism, I bind you in Jesus name, come up and out of God's people right now, up and out, all skepticism, go mistrust and inability to trust anyone or anything come up and out right now in Jesus name, not being able to trust the word, not trusting God, not trusting people, those in authority come up and out right now in Jesus name, all evasiveness, you come up and out right now, I bind you and I command you to go to the dry places, go right now in Jesus name, all evasiveness out, out, out right now in Jesus name all deflecting and keeping a record of wrongs come up and out of God's people right now, keeping records of wrongs of other people against other people and yourself come up and out right now in Jesus name. I break your power all the way out. Come up and out right now in Jesus name. 
inability to apologize when you're wrong. That's pride. Come out now in Jesus name, not apologizing when you need to come up and out right now in Jesus name. I break your power. All pride go right now. Jesus, I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, you'll contend with Leviathan and all pride would be extracted right now and expelled in Jesus name. Being pushy, come out right now, all pushy spirits, all pushy spirits that try to move people around on the chessboard and control and manipulate, go now in Jesus' name. All disappointment, falling for the lie of disappointment when God has good things for you, come out in Jesus' name. All disappointments go right now in Jesus' name. All regrets and disappointments get out right now in Jesus' name. I break your power. All innuendos and not saying what you really mean. Come up and out right now in Jesus' name. Out of fear of rejection, all innuendos. Speaking in innuendos, go in Jesus' name. Out in Jesus' name right now. Come out right now, all the way out. All the way out in Jesus' name. Being obligated and having the wrong motives. Come up and out right now. Be feeling obligated because you have fear of rejection. Come out right now in Jesus' name. I break the power of all scrambler spirits and confusion and every evil work up and out of God's people right now in Jesus name. I bind you and I break your power. Go to the dry places now in Jesus name, all discouragement and division out in Jesus name, come up and out right now in Jesus name, all discord and division out in Jesus name, every spirit of discouragement, you leave God's people right now in Jesus name, up and out, go, go, go right now in Jesus name. All rebellion and defiance, I break your power. I bind you in Jesus' name and I command you to go out rebellion. Go right now in Jesus' name. All antichrist rebellion, get out. All disobedience, go right now in Jesus' name. Being defiant, being defiant against the word of God even. Get out right now in Jesus' name. You loose them and let them go right now in Jesus' name. Replay and record. We put the stop button on you right now in Jesus' name. We command all replay and record to come out in Jesus' name. That replay and record that's causing and replaying all the bad times, come up and out right now. That brings back all traumas, all hurts and rejection. Replay and record. Go in Jesus' name. All spirits of rehearsal that has you rehearsing what you're going to say. They, they belong to the Holy Spirit who will give them the words to say at the right time. They don't have to rehearse it in their flesh. All rehearsal, go right now in Jesus' name. Up and out, up and out right now. Go right now in Jesus' name. All comparison spirits. These people are made uniquely by God to be who they are. So every comparison spirit that causes them to feel inadequate against themselves, come up and out right now in Jesus' name. All comparison spirits, go, go now in Jesus' name. All competition, out in Jesus' name. Go, go, go right now in Jesus' name, up and out. Go, go, go right now. All curiosity spirit and busybody spirits, up and out right now. Being in other people's business, go in Jesus' name. Out in Jesus' name. All control and manipulation. I command in the name of Jesus Christ and by the power of the Holy Spirit that you come out in Jesus' name and you go to the dry places. All control and manipulation. All Jezebel spirits, go right now in Jesus' name. We break your power in Jesus' name. All gloating and pride and haughtiness up and out right now in Jesus' name. Being puffed up with knowledge, being puffed up and gloating about who you are and, who, and go now in Jesus' name up and out. All the way out, every burden bearing spirit right now in Jesus name, I command you to come off of God's people right now. You stop weighing them down. You come out and you go to the dry places right now in Jesus name. All misunderstanding and twistings up and out right now in Jesus name. Go now, a spirit of misunderstanding. The one that's not perceiving correctly what's going on, get out now in Jesus name. The destroyer, I confront you, destroyer, and I bind you and I command you to come out of God's people right now. All destroyer spirits, death, hell, and destruction, come up and out right now in Jesus' name. You loose them and let them go. In Jesus' name, let her go right now in Jesus' name. Go, go, go right now in Jesus' name. Shame and being ashamed, constant shame. I break your power. You come out of them right now in Jesus' name. All shame, go right now in Jesus' name. We'll not tolerate you anymore. All shame, guilt, and condemnation up and out right now. There's no condemnation to those who are in Christ. It is written. So all condemnation and guilt go right now in Jesus' name. I take authority over a loser spirit right now. There's nobody in this room that's a loser. So I take authority over every loser spirit and I command you to go right now in Jesus name. You come up and out right now in Jesus name. 
all complaining and murmuring spirits, being bored and monotonous. I break your power and I command you to come up and out of God's people right now in Jesus name. Every complaining and murmuring spirit that keeps you wandering around in the wilderness, get out in Jesus name, all murmuring spirits out in Jesus name, feeling overwhelmed. That's a spirit. So I take authority over a spirit of being overwhelmed right now. And I command overwhelmed to go right now in Jesus name, in Jesus name, all overwhelmed go. We're in a society right now where that's big, all overwhelming spirits go right now in Jesus name, all unworthiness. I confront you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And I command all unworthiness to go right now to the dry places. You come out of God's people right now. They are worthy. They are valuable. They are chosen and accepted. So all unworthiness is a lie. Go now in Jesus name. All unworthiness go. Getting tired and bogged down with life. Tiredness, I break your power right now. Up and out right now in Jesus name. We bind you and we command you to leave them now in Jesus name. All self-sabotage. Up and out right now in Jesus name. Loose them and let them go right now in Jesus name. All self-sabotage go now in Jesus name all helplessness that says i can't you come out you come out you that's not even to be in their vocabulary from now on there's no spirits of i can't it's i can do all things through christ so come out right now in jesus name all helplessness all helplessness go right now in jesus name you're a liar all impatience and intolerance i bind and break your power and i command you to come out right now in jesus name i loose the fruit of patience and kindness and gentleness on you. And I command all impatience to come out in Jesus name. I take authority over and I command woulda, coulda, shoulda to go right now. Living in regret, go regret out in Jesus name. Living in the past, go right now in Jesus name. Up and out right now in Jesus name. All perfectionism that leads to a fabricated personality. Up and out right now in Jesus name. You'll not take their memory. You'll not take their mind. They have the mind of Christ. Come up and out right now in Jesus' name, all perfectionism. Right now in Jesus' name, all fabricated personality, I confront you with the name of Jesus, and I command you to come up and out of them right now. All aggravation and agitation, go in the name of Jesus. All drivenness that's done in the flesh, I bind you and I break your power. Come out right now in Jesus' name. All drivenness, go right now. All irritableness, go right now. All irritability, out in Jesus' name. You lose them and let them go right now in Jesus name, all compulsiveness, all compulsive behaviors. I confront you with the name of Jesus. I bind you with the name of Jesus. And I command you to leave in the name of Jesus, all compulsions go nail biting, anything that's compulsive, compulsive cleaning, uh, compulsive, uh, rep repetitive actions. I break your power right now. And I command you to come out right now in Jesus name, being over analytical, analytically, just analyzing every single thought. I come against a spirit of analytical right now in Jesus name. And I command you to loose God's people and let them go. Let them go right now. All an analytical spirits right now in Jesus name. Playing the Holy Spirit, being the Holy Spirit junior and trying to tell other people what they need to do. I break your power right now in Jesus name. Go now in Jesus name up and out right now. Self-pity and questioning God. Get out right now in Jesus name. Up and out right now. All doubt, unbelief right now that causes you to question God. I break your power and I command all double-mindedness to come out and go right now in Jesus' name. Up and out right now. All double-mindedness go right now in Jesus' name. All racism, I break your power and I command you to come up and out. All unsolicited advice, come up and out right now in Jesus' name. Let them go right now. Go, go, go in Jesus' name. All stubbornness, I break your power, I bind you, and I command you to loose them now and let them go. All stiff neck stubbornness, not being obedient to the word of God, go in Jesus' name, up and out, I command you in Jesus' name. The excuse makers, I take authority over you in Jesus' name right now. Every excuse maker, go right now in Jesus' name. Making excuses to cover up, go in Jesus' name. All blame, playing the blame game so that you don't have to take responsibility. I break your power right now in Jesus' name. All blame spirits come up and out right now. Blame game, go in Jesus' name. Up and out right now in Jesus' name. I break your power and I command you to go. Go to the dry places right now in Jesus' name. Being obstinate and stubborn, I break your power right now in Jesus' name. All obstinate spirits go right now in Jesus' name. Up and out of God's people and go right now. Up and out right now in Jesus' name. All self-accusation and all accusation, 
I break your power and I command you to come out of God's people right now in Jesus' name. They will not come into agreement with the accuser of the brethren. All self-accusation and accusation up and out. Go right now in Jesus' name. Loose them and let them go. All accusation against self and others and even God. I come against you right now in the name of Jesus and I command you to come out of God's people. Loose them and let them go right now in Jesus' name. All accusation of any kind, any demon with the name of accusation, get out right now in Jesus' name. Having fear of self and others, I break your power and I bind you in Jesus' name and I command you to go to the dry places. Fear of failure, fear of rejection, I break your power and I command you to go up and out right now. Go, go, go right now in Jesus' name. Up and out, go. Every lying spirit that would try to come against them, I break your power right now in Jesus' name. And I command all lying spirits to go to the dry places right now. Up and out, let them go. Loose them and let them go. All lies out right now in Jesus' name. Lying spirits, go. Lying spirits out right now in Jesus' name. Loose them and let them go. Loose them and let them go. We release a spirit of truth through the word on these people. And we command all lying spirits to go to the dry places in Jesus' name. And Lord, we thank you, we thank you, and we praise you, Lord God, for the deliverance that happened today. We thank you, Lord, for your word that establishes what it was sent to do. I ask you, Lord God, to fill God's people back up full to the fullness, Lord. Everything that was vacated, every crevice that is vacated would be filled to overflowing with your Holy Spirit. May these houses never be found swept and clean, but full of the Holy Spirit and the word. In Jesus' name, and Lord, I pray an anointing and a grace on them to walk out their deliverance by taking their thoughts captive in Jesus' name.